This amazing instant hack will improve all your photos, less editing and more time to go out and take pictures. If you've seen this channel before, normally we are pixel peeping and doing deep dive gear reviews, often like related, but what about just taking great photos? If you're like me, you probably tried to buy equipment to improve your photography. And the problem we've got now is the equipment's getting so perfect that the photos are getting a bit boring. So then we go back and start looking at buying vintage lenses to try to make our photos more creative. What if I could tell you that with this simple hack, you could make photos with your brand new lenses look almost as amazing as photos with your vintage lenses. And yes, I'm just buzzing. I've just come back from my model photography shoot in Poland. I've used this item for the whole trip and now I can't imagine taking photos without it. So with that, let's jump into the video. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLiker.com. I specialize in female portraiture, model photography and wedding photography. And so my job is to make the client look better than reality. And then hopefully they'll be really happy with the photos. Clients often don't want to see every imperfection, so that normally results in me using very fast lenses, say 50 f1, 50 0.95, or using vintage lenses which have got a softer rendering. Now if you love film photography the same as me, what if you could get film looking images straight from your digital camera, even with modern, boring, sterile, clinical, apo, add the word that you want to add, brand new, modern, super sharp lenses. What if you could get a film look with these lenses straight out of camera with zero editing? In this video, rather than just tell you, I will show you how it just put a massive grin on my face and I loved it and the models loved it. And so I thought I'd share it with you guys. Is this video for all photographers? I'd say no. I'd split photography into maybe two types. I'd say the documentary style photographers, meaning you're trying to make a super sharp high res accurate representation of whatever you're photographing maybe it's architecture or you have creative photographers we are trying to create something better than reality now as someone that used to paint i'm definitely in the creative camp and so i'm always looking to try any hack trick method i can use to make better than reality photos and as i say in the past i've often used quirky and vintage lenses but what if you could get this from every single lens and so with that, let me introduce you to the KNF Black Mist Diffusion Filter. Now, if you're smarter than me, you're probably like, yeah, they've been around for years. What, what's new about this? Perhaps I was living in a cave, but I somehow managed to miss these diffusion filters. They're made by Tiffin, they're made by, this one made by Cine Bloom by Monument, I think it is, something quite new. But I noticed this when I was doing a photo review for a Patreon via a Zoom call, and he took a nice picture with a Q2. And I said, oh, how did you get that rendering? He's like, oh, I just used a, a black pro mist filter. I'm like, huh. So I did, did my research and then I compared all the different ones and I decided to get the KNF Concept 8th power, which seemed to work well for my photography. I might also get a quarter strength one for video to make the background a bit more blurry in these videos. So that's what we're looking at today. So what's the difference between that and say putting a bit of Vaseline on your UV filter? The difference is these are what are used in the film industry what I'm going to show you is rather than tell you about the product, I'm going to show you how I use it to get what I like to think is really amazing results and better than I've got for maybe a long time, perhaps ever. So how does the filter work? I think the reason it's great for us guys that like using, say, Lycra equipment and high-end uh, photography equipment, rather than, say, Vaseline, where it just blurs your image and you lose all your, your definition and your sharpness, these filters retain the sharpness, but they drop your contrast they drop the saturation and they'll give like blooming around the highlights and lift the shadows. So it gives like a 1980s film look straight from a, a digital camera, which is obviously, well, if you like that kind of thing like me, it's, it's amazing. And then it softens the skin on the, the people you're photographing. So I'd say it's particularly amazing for say two types of photographers, maybe three. You could be like a portrait wedding photographer like myself, so clients are just going to absolutely love you because it's just going to render them like an iPhone filter <laughs> slapped on the face. They're just going to look better than reality. Number one, you could do like a night photography and have a particular love for say Cine Still 800 film where you get the nice halation around the lights. Number two. And then number three, you could just be like a generalist where you just enjoy making everything better than reality. You could be doing product photography, but your client gives you artistic kind of license to make it better than reality in terms of a bit arty. And so with that, rather than me just blabbing on and telling you about it, let me show you the results I got from my trip to Poland. This is the first of four videos from Poland. So 
if you're interested in more from the, the model, feel free to subscribe. And I'll also share some behind the scenes videos on my Patreon teaching platform. If you're into model photography, definitely check out that. Okay, so how does this work? Well, I'm using this filter at the moment to video me. And I'll put these lights here so you can see that there's a bit of halation around the lights. And so that's the effect it does to any light source. I was kind of learning on the job with the filter in Poland and shooting the models a bit backlit. And if it's backlit but not into direct sun, you get a, uh, a softer look, a less dramatic look, a less obvious look, but still very nice and still great for the models. If you then start shooting into direct sun, that's when like things get really amazing because then you get photos that look like this. And I was trying to catch the sun in the frame to kind of bleed the light in to create hopefully something really special for both me and the models. And all of these photos are raw, completely unedited. So if you like the look of these, these are shot with brand new modern autofocus lenses on the Leica SL camera. And I will review the lenses in the part two, part three videos from Poland. If you zoom in closely, these photos are really sharp. You can see like every eyelash, they're all shot wide open at F2. Yet, from a, if you stand back, they look soft and dreamy. And so you do pretty much get the best of both. The difference with using say a model lens and a filter compared to a vintage lens. Vintage lenses, you'll often have a lot of fall off at the edges because you'll need to shoot the lens wide open to get the, often to get the dreamy look. Whereas with this, you can stop the lens down and still get the dreamy look. And then I guess if you want an extra dreamy look, you could just add a diffusion filter, such as the one we're talking about, to your vintage lens. And then you can stop your vintage lens down and still get some kind of glowing highlights, yet a bit more sharpness. So this is all great for digital, but what about for film? If you shoot film the same as me, then I think cameras like the Hasblad in particular, those lenses are so sharp, I think they would actually benefit from using a diffusion filter on those lenses for film portraits uh, for the models that I shoot. I did use it for a few photos with my Leica R7, and so those are to come once the film is developed. Let's look at a few more examples from Poland. It's a lower contrast look because I was trying to get low and shooting up at the sun, and then this little dude walks past with his dog, and so I got a few photos with the, both him, the dog, and the model, as you can see. Now, if you change your angle so you're not shooting towards the sun, suddenly you get all your contrast back. So you can see here, this is a much more contrasty image you really can decide on the look that you want depending on where you place the sun or the light in your scene. And what about those of you that love the CineSteel 800T? So again, I went out at night in Poland and shot these trams and here's the photo without the filter and then here's the photo with the filter and you can see the, the amazing halation that you get from the filter. And then same with like neon signs. First, the photos are shot without the filter and now with the filter and you can see the nice glow around the lights and yeah, I think it's a massive improvement on the with versus without. So I would always now choose to use this filter for such types of photographs. Uh, if you're shooting in daylight, as you can see from these trees, here is without and then with. And then I shot from the balcony where I was in Poland to do the Leica workshop. Here's a photo without and then here's a photo with. So for someone that's always looking to make better than reality photos, I think this filter is an absolute game changer. You can use it on every single lens. So the trick is buy the filter size, the size of your biggest diameter lens. So say you've got one lens, which is a 77 mil filter thread, buy a 77 mil diffusion filter. I can put a link below to Amazon. They're roughly $70 or a bit less than 70 pounds, but you might be able to find them cheaper in other places as well. And then just check the strength. You can get eighth, a quarter, half a bit too much for most applications. So most people go for an eighth or a quarter. And as I say, Tiffin also make them, so you don't necessarily need to get this brand, but from our results, I've been really happy with this one. The best thing is if you hate editing, now my editing process has got even faster. So before I used to shoot raw, add my Mr. Like a preset, send it to the models, and they look pretty nice, I'd like to think. Now I use the filter on the lens, shooting raw, apply my preset, send it to the models. The difference being the photos now look like they've been massively photoshopped, <laughs> where before they probably looked a bit more real to life. Still pretty, but more real. Now they look better than real. So if you hate editing and want to be outside in the sunshine rather than spending two hours on one photo trying to add your fake flare look and whatever else you can, people try to do to improve a boring photo, you don't need to do any of that anymore. Buy one filter, use it on all your lenses and job done. I was using it on a 35mm, 50mm and 65mm lens. 
and we'll talk more about the lenses in the next video from Poland. If you found this video useful, please smash the like button and please share to your fellow photographer friends. Everybody pretty much can benefit from using this simple hack just to improve their photography. As always, a massive thanks to my awesome patrons. As I say, I will share some videos there. And if you enjoyed this video, you might want to watch this video next.